Hey, Pastor Scott here with a word of encouragement. So Sandy and I were in uh, Fresno over last Sunday uh, meeting our brand new grandson, Reed. And he's perfect. <laughs> no, no, seriously, he, he's, he's perfect. We are, uh, we are so blessed and so thankful. While I was there, I had the opportunity to do something that I rarely really get a chance to do, and that is to attend a church as a, a congregant. And I was pretty excited on the drive to a church, and, and I found myself praying. I mean, really praying. And, and man, once I got going, I was overcome with, with prayer. And, and, you know, I prayed for, I prayed for the pastor. I prayed that the Lord would use them uh, boldly to reclaim God's truth, that, that he or she would know the presence of God was with them and that they would say what God gave them to say and, and nothing else. And, and I prayed for those that would be, that I'd be worshiping with, that, that they would be fully present in the worship service and that they would give themselves fully to the presence of God and to what God may want to speak to them that day. I prayed for those who were still home thinking, well, should we or should we not? And I just pray that the Lord would overwhelm them with an invitation from the Holy Spirit. I prayed for those who were already there, the folks that had unlocked the doors and were turning on the lights and adjusting the temperature and waiting to greet people as they arrived. And my heart was filled with gratitude for them. And I prayed for myself that, that I might be open to hear every facet and experience every facet of that worship experience and that the Lord might fill me with a hunger to experience him and, and that I might receive whatever, whatever it was that, that God had to offer. And it changed the way I worshiped that morning. Now, I know that this is a spiritual discipline for many of you all praying on Sunday mornings for the worship experience. Don't stop. And, and if you're not in the habit of praying before worship on a Sunday, please start. Pray for the preacher. Pray for those who will be leading. Pray for the choir. Pray for the Sunday school teachers and the greeters. Pray for the tech teams and, and all who will be serving and give thanks to God for all of them. And pray that, that you might have an encounter with God during the worship experience and during Sunday school, maybe even in the hallway in between. I mean, isn't that why you come? to experience the presence of God in a way that will impact your life and, and what you have going on in your life right now. Paul instructs young Timothy in 1 Timothy 2.1, I urge you, first of all, first of all, that prayers and petitions, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people. And then Paul says in Colossians 1.9, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. I hope you'll make that a regular Sunday morning spiritual discipline. And I want to invite you also to pray for this Saturday, um, November the 18th, and for the special session of the North Georgia Annual Conference. They will be voting to release a number, another 264 churches. And I pray that, um, that, that God would be in that, in, in, in that, um, that moving of, of that gathering of those sisters and brothers. And also, just want to give you a little teaser that there's going to be some additions to the worship service for the Advent season, which begins on December the 3rd. Stay tuned, be present, and be encouraged.